Hello, hello, everyone. So I want you to go ahead and grab your journal. I highly recommend you either assign a journal, notebook, tablet, I don't know, y'all, parchment paper, something. But you are going to need the ability to kind of jot down and take notes as we go through this series. <sighs> uh, let me introduce myself. I am Shandria Kelly. I am the main creative and owner of BCJ Decor, where we specialize in loving, handmade, and whoo, highly scented candles. We make custom tumblers, t-shirts, event planning, we do it all. But most of all, we are here and we love sharing with the small business community. It's all about growing, it's all about sharing, and this is where it starts. So 48 Laws of Power are what we are going to focus on. We are starting with the prelude. This is episode number one. Um, guys, and so September 10th, um, about 11.30 in the morning, so we're going to rock this one out. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The prelude is about 24 and a half minutes long, just shy of it, okay? So I already got my tumbler. We already know how this goes, but so between me going through, I have some stop points that I definitely want to hit and just kind of share initial thoughts and just wow. Um, I just went through, honestly, just to kind of figure out those places where we should probably pause and maybe talk. But the goal is probably to keep every video somewhere between 40 to 45 minutes is my goal. So anything an hour long or better gets, you know, it's a little rough for some people, but that's why it's all about the screen. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Um, I've already gone in and pulled up exactly where we're going for YouTube. So this is going to be our nice little screen here and we will hide our controls. I'm going to pause this as I go through and what I'll probably have to do as well. Oh, y'all yeah, know I'm pressing buttons. And so I can really, you know, see my timer down here. There are some moments in this prelude that make you stop, pause, and kind of just get into yourself. But we're gonna go ahead and start listening. So let's go. The feeling of having no power over people and events is generally unbearable to us. When we feel helpless, we feel miserable. No one wants less power. Everyone wants more. In the world today, however, it is dangerous to seem too power hungry, to be overt with your power moves. We have to seem fair and decent. So we need to be subtle, congenial, yet cunning, democratic, yet devious. This game of constant duplicity most resembles the power dynamic that existed in the scheming world of the old aristocratic court. Throughout history, a court has always formed itself around the person in power, king, queen, emperor, leader. The courtiers who filled this court were in an especially delicate position. They had to serve their masters, but if they seemed to fawn, if they carried favor too obviously, the other courtiers around them would notice and would act against them. Attempts to win the master's favor then had to be subtle. And even skilled courtiers capable of such subtlety still had to protect themselves from their fellow courtiers who at all moments were scheming to push them aside. Now, I just want to pause here, guys, because number one, the guy who reads for this audiobook is absolutely amazing. Like the way he reads, it is, it almost makes you feel like this is like a book of deception. Like this is nine and a half plus hours that are about to absolutely change my whole outlook in life. But so I'm, 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 I'm here for it. I'm loving it. Okay. I am just absolutely loving it. But let's kind of set the scene because I want you as a small business owner to really pause and put in your mind that we're talking about family members. We're talking about sometimes parents, siblings, um, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, we're talking about those that absolutely have a good idea as to how they can hit hard, where to hit hard, especially when 
there's sometimes an intimidation factor. There's 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 always this feeling that you're going to end up doing a little bit more or being a little bit more known than the next person. And there's this push to just not allow that to happen. So when when he taps on that and talks about the court and you guys are thinking about Victorian you know, age where you had to appear a certain way and carry yourself and your dress and position were important, your skills were important. It's, it's very relevant to today. If you're the small business owner, you have to be mindful. You're mindful about, you You know, what pictures you take, what places you go, what's posted on social media, what type of product you're putting out, because you're always at the mercy or it feels as though you can be at the mercy of others, but... Let's keep going. Meanwhile, the court was supposed to represent the height of civilization and refinement. Violent or overt power moves were frowned upon. Courtiers would work silently and secretly against any among them who used force. This was the courtier's dilemma. While appearing the very paragon of elegance, they had to outwit and thwart their own opponents in the subtlest of ways. The successful courtier learned over time to make all of his moves indirect. If he stabbed an opponent in the back, it was with a velvet glove on his hand and the sweetest of smiles on his face. Instead of using coercion or outright treachery, the perfect courtier got his way through seduction, charm, deception, and subtle strategy, always planning several moves ahead. Life in the court was a never-ending game that required constant vigilance and tactical thinking. It was civilized war. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Okay, y'all. No. No. So we are absolutely pulling back the entire curtain in this situation. We, we are stopping and literally breaking down and thinking about the not only the rumors, but the events that had to have allegedly occurred to even create the essence of a rumor in the first place. We are looking at what makes people tick and more so what makes you tick and how that attracts those individuals that are currently around you. It's, it's stopping to analyze at all times what is the message that is being put out and not allowing it to stress you because you don't want to appear as if you're doing any better than anyone else. My, I, I, I promise you, I, I hear my brother saying this statement to me all the time, always say less than necessary. And I know it's one of the laws that we're going to hit and talk about in that chapter. Oh my gosh, it hits so hard, but we are literally two minutes in. And so I know we're probably going to break this up. But this is what I'm talking about. When, when, when we go into 48 laws and you're stopping to think about what that last person said to you, why they would say it, and what was their intent behind it. When you end up with that customer that no matter what is being done is just absolutely not pleased with what's going on, but they insist on continuing to try to do business with you. When you have expectations put upon you that you didn't, oh, so much, so much. But let's keep going. similar paradox to that of the courtier. Everything must appear civilized, decent, democratic, and fair. But if we play by those rules too strictly, if we take them too literally, we are crushed by those around us who are not so foolish. As the great Renaissance diplomat and courtier Niccolo Machiavelli wrote, any man who tries to be good all the time is bound to come to ruin among the great number who are not good. The court imagined itself the pinnacle of refinement, but underneath its glittering surface, a cauldron of dark emotion, greed, envy, lust, hatred, boil, and How many times has it felt as though you have been trying to hit this high road? And no matter how hard you try to stay on this high road, that it was just absolutely not meant for you to be there. How many times have you stopped to kind of just ask yourself, like, is this really worth it? Am I, am I really, is this going to be the day that I'm going to give them the same energy that they are giving 
me because so many of us have been pushed to that point, especially when you know that you are working in a field and in an industry where your expertise is invaluable. You know what you're talking about. And there's still just so much. And then you're having to always calculate out all of the what ifs. It's being prepared as well as being in a defensive mode at all times. That, that's a big one because as a small business owner, you're putting out a part of you for every product that makes it to the shelf, for every customer you know, who places that order and for whether they're confident about the product or not. The biggest part about this is you're putting it out there for everyone to have a piece of it and to experience it and to have an opinion about it. It's a lot. Our world today similarly imagines itself the pinnacle of fairness. Yet the same ugly emotions still stir within us as they have forever. The game is the same. Outwardly, you must seem to respect the niceties, but inwardly, unless you are a fool, you learn quickly to be prudent and to do as Napoleon advised. Place your iron hand inside the velvet glove. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, hold up, y'all. No. Whoa. Whoa. Three minutes, 39 seconds in. I got to write that down in the journal. That is the Napoleon comment. Oh, my God. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. Whoa. 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 This quote, this quote just hit y'all. This, this quote, this quote. You place your iron hand inside the velvet glove. Oh, they don't see it coming. Oh, it ties in so strongly. It, 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 it's when people underestimate what you are attempting to do. Okay. Okay. Y'all gotta give me a second. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, I just got to take a break. Okay, okay, wow. There, there have been so many moments where <clears throat> I have researched and been, been sent down so many dead ends and trying to create a product that I knew was worth it. I knew it served a purpose. It had an audience. There was a need. It, it was just trying to bring this product to fruition that was so clearly in my mind. Like It, it felt like it had been laid there just for me and the opposition from the people that was not involved in the process at all, the, the audacity of providing their opinions when they were unsolicited was amazing to me. It was, it, was, it was scary enough to put myself out there with a product that I started using, I enjoyed, I fell in love with and wanted to share. And when you start sharing, you open yourself up to the opinions of other people which can sometimes be the most terrifying thing ever. And there's always this, this back essence of, I've got to keep going to one up, one up, one up the next person. But this is telling you, it's not that you're not thinking about it. It's not that you're not calculating it out. It's actually the fact that you're not pausing long enough to do it quietly. There, there are so many times when that one person just goes too far and you let them have it. And that's, Wow, that iron fist, that, that, that truth, that I am sound in my ability, my experience, my desires. Oh, but I will hide it. I will, I will, oh, oh my gosh, the cloaking. Three minutes, 39 seconds, y'all, the Napoleon iron, iron, oh, 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 this, this velvet bag. That is inspiration for me. It is, it is. Master the arts of indirection, learning to seduce, charm, deceive, and subtly outmaneuver your opponents. You will attain the heights of power. You will be able to make people bend to your will without their realizing what you have done. And if they do not realize what you have done, they will neither resent nor resist you. To some people, the notion of consciously playing power games, no matter how indirect, seems evil, a social, a relic of the past. They believe they can opt out of the game by behaving in ways that have nothing to do with power. You must beware of such people. They
they are often among the most adept players at power. A lot of the times, this person is us. It's, it, it's, it's the business owner. Every time he hits this topic, and keep in mind, I've skipped through um, and done a couple of chapters here and there. But every time he talks about this topic in particular, it always makes me think of pricing and how there is a guilt feeling in asking for your worth and going in and, and just being honest with the math, with the numbers and not telling yourself, oh my gosh, this is too expensive to ask of anybody because no, it's not. You're, you're literally asking for what you know is most important to you. It's a learned behavior that we have to stop and do. And that's going to be the biggest one. So I'm telling you, if nothing else, guys, y'all paying attention to yourself and knowing that, yes, you deserve it. And yes, you are worth it. Yes, you have put in the time and the effort. You have tested. You have, you know, shipped. You, you've done everything know that customer is not always going to be right and it's okay it's 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 a big one it's a big one they utilize strategies that cleverly disguise the nature of the manipulation involved these types for example will often display their weakness and lack of power as a kind of moral virtue for true powerlessness without any motive of self-interest would not publicize its weakness to gain sympathy or respect. Making a show of one's weakness is actually a very effective strategy, subtle and deceptive, in the game of power. Another strategy of the supposed non-player is to demand equality in every area of life. Everyone must be treated alike, whatever their status and strength. But if, to avoid the taint of power, you attempt to treat everyone equally and fairly, you will confront the problem that some people do certain things better than others. Treating everyone equally means ignoring their differences, elevating the less skillful, and suppressing those who excel. There might be a million people making candles. And I think all of us can be honest because when we were consumers, before we became creatives, there were certain candles that you bought all the time, sight unseen, when they came out with a new product, you didn't care, you bought it because it was better to you. Some of us are just better at making certain things. There are some people that can sew and blow you out the water and there are some of us that can barely put a button back in place. Y'all, there are, especially when you start taking custom orders, you start doing custom blends, you start adding crystals and flowers and whatever else, herbs, how, however you want to look at it. The fact that we cannot accept that we will not be the best at everything. We won't have the best boxes and packaging. We won't have the best marketing. We won't. There's always somebody else who's thinking in a different direction that's going to be seeing this new and crisp and edge. Wow. I mean, and this book was written years and years ago. It is based off of a span of 3,000 years. We're, we're talking about looking at kingdoms and nations and, and, and courts that where business was carried out, where deals were made, where land exchanged hands, where marriages were, were solidified. Like, it is the essence of power. And one of the reasons you became a small business owner is because you wanted to, to have more control over what was taking place and how it was taking place. And one of the biggest learning curves of becoming a business owner is that now you have to deal with other business owners who want it run it their way. And it's, oh, wow. Being able to make moves and make a difference without it being noticed, understanding the purpose of the gloved hand, understanding the purpose of the cloak is really, really huge. Let's go back, let's go back. Again, many of those who behave this way are actually deploying another power strategy, redistributing people's rewards in a way 
that they determine. Yet another way of avoiding the game would be perfect honesty and straightforwardness, since one of the main techniques of those who seek power is deceit and secrecy. But being perfectly honest will inevitably hurt and insult a great many people, some of whom will choose to injure you in return. Some of y'all got to learn to close your mouth. <laughs> it is not that you don't want to tell that customer that they have no idea what they're talking about. It is not that you want to tell that, that, that family member who has never succeeded in business at all that you do not want their own. So sometimes it's not worth it. Remember at the very beginning, less than three minutes in, the number one thing that was a focus was telling yourself, was it worth it? It comes back to valuing your time. This one is going to be a good one. Be a good one. No one will see your honest statement as completely objective and free of some personal motivation. And they will be right. In truth, the use of honesty is indeed a power strategy intended to convince people of one's noble, good-hearted, selfless character. It is a form of persuasion, even a subtle form of coercion. Finally, those who claim to be non-players may affect an air of naivete to protect them from the accusation that they are after power. Beware again, however, for the appearance of naivete can be an effective means of deceit. And even genuine naivete is not free of the snares of power. Children may be naive in many ways, but they often act from an elemental need to gain control over those around them. Children suffer greatly from feeling powerless in the adult world, and they use any means available to get their way. Genuinely innocent people may still be playing for power and are often horribly effective at the game since they are not hindered by reflection. One. Mm, wow. It's, it's always a push towards survival of the fittest. We can all start at the same point. We can all purchase the same ingredients. The difference in the mix, the only difference in the mix is the owner. It's you. And you are going to do whatever you need to do to ensure your survival because that's what... This is all about, it's about being able to make money the way in which I choose. Being able to have that earning potential grow and continue to grow. And that's gonna require you to get quiet at some times and to speak up at some times and to make some moves that sometimes you have to question in yourself. Is it even possible? It's gonna be one of those questions. That's a, that's a big one. It's. That's survival is a push, you guys. Survival makes you do a lot of things, a lot of things. Those who make a show or display of innocence are the least innocent of all. You can recognize these supposed non-players by the way they flaunt their moral qualities, their piety, their exquisite sense of justice. But since all of us hunger for power and almost all of our actions are aimed at gaining it, the non-players are merely throwing dust in our eyes, distracting us from their power plays with their air of moral superiority. If you observe them closely, you will see, in fact, that they are often the ones most skillful at indirect manipulation, even if some of them practice it unconsciously, and they greatly resent any publicizing of the tactics they use every day. If the world is like a giant steaming court, and we are trapped inside it. There is no use in trying to opt out of the game. That will only render you powerless, and powerlessness will make you miserable. Instead of struggling against the inevitable, instead of arguing and whining and feeling guilty, it is far better to excel at power. In fact, the better you are at dealing with power, the better friend, lover, husband, wife, and person you become. By following the route of the perfect courtier, 
You learn to make others feel better about themselves, becoming a source of pleasure to them. They will grow dependent on your abilities and desires of your presence. By mastering the 48 laws in this book, you spare others the pain that comes from bungling with power. I Creating a buffer zone for yourself and encouraging and enabling those around you to have that personal success and to think of themselves in that way is a flow of energy that creates greatness. Creating a work environment where people want to come to work, where people are asking what's coming up next, creating a brand that's evolving and you know, still remaining stable with that base product, like creating that atmosphere and that buzz around what you're doing and how you're doing it. It's what he's hitting at. It's, it kind of reminds me of like stoicism where you really pick and start to gauge whether something is even worth your time before you ever jump into it in the first place. 48 laws. Playing with fire without knowing its properties. If the game of power is inescapable, better to be an artist than a denier or a bungler. Learning the game of power requires a certain way of looking at the world, a shifting of perspective. It takes effort and years of practice, for much of the game may not come naturally. Certain basic skills are required. And once you master these skills, you will be able to apply the laws of power more easily. Creating a product, putting it out for customers to place and use in their homes involves so many steps that so many of us are not comfortable with. It has required us to not only step out of our comfort zone, but to learn to advertise and to toot our own horns when nobody else is tooting for us. It has forced us to sign up for markets. It's forced us to walk into larger businesses and shops um, with a desire to do a wholesale deal or a merchandising deal. It has caused us to reach out to other business owners to do collaborations. It's put us into this, this entirely different world, this different universe where there's so many other parts and pieces that help to make you great. It's like, these are the moments, you know, he's talking in this couple of minutes about being able to govern your expectations. Oh, wow. That's a big one. The most important of these skills and power's crucial foundation is the ability to master your emotions. An emotional response to a situation is the single greatest barrier to power. I'm a they stole my candle. They stole my idea. They copied my label. They copied my packaging. I can't believe they signed up for the same market I did. This market had the audacity to have eight other candle makers there out of you know 50 vendors and I can't believe this and all, all, all those excuses y'all we, we've all said them and the bad thing is we've all thought them and most of us who've been doing this for a while have learned really really quickly I want to be mindful of the image that I put out at all times because that particular image will come back to haunt me before anything else will I want to understand that every person I run into is a business owner at a different stage and step in their journey. I want to always keep in my mind that not everyone's experience is going to be just like mine. Mm. Wow. Mistakes that will cost you a lot more than any temporary satisfaction you might be by expressing your feelings. Emotions cloud reason. And if you cannot see the situation clearly, you cannot prepare for and respond to it with any degree of control. Anger is the most destructive of emotional responses 
for it clouds your vision the most. It also has a ripple effect that invariably makes situations less controllable and heightens your enemy's resolve. If you were trying to destroy an enemy who has hurt you, far better to keep him off guard by feigning friendliness than showing your anger. Love and affection are also potentially destructive in that they blind you to the often self-serving interests of those whom you least suspect of playing a power game. You cannot repress anger or love or avoid feeling them, and you should not try, but you should be careful about how you express them. And most important, they should never influence your plans and strategies in any way. This is huge. When we see the debates, um, it kind of makes me think of the debates when it comes down to like types of wax, whether it is um, soy wax, beeswax, parasoy, paraffin, um, coconut, you know, coconut, apricot, you know, whatever new blend that's coming out and all the proprietary blends that kind of come to mind. Sometimes those arguments aren't worth it. And I know some of y'all are probably smiling right now because you can remember probably the first time you either asked a question in a group about wax or the first time you read a question and just started scrolling through the comments. And I tell my kids all the time, I lose so much time on the comments because the comments are where the entire list and expectation of entertainment exists. Oh my God. Y'all, some, some, some of the comments are so bad. They're so bad. They're so oh, aggressive. It's ridiculous. That you have to really remember that we are adults, like adults, and we're sitting here pumping out some of the stuff. So wow. Anger and love, and how you express both. There, there are some things in the community that I think are taboo topics that are taboo for a reason and should be approached in a very controlled environment because they can easily escalate. And, you know, even when it comes down to adding things to your candles and the source for your fragrance oils and whether you should be using it at all. And, Oh, but what about the wigs? Like, y'all, yeah, the, the conversations. But it's it's how you you carry out the conversation. I think that's going to make the biggest difference. Related to mastering your emotions is the ability to distance yourself from the present moment and think objectively about the past and future. Like the double-faced Roman deity and guardian of all gates and doorways, you must be able to look in both directions at once, the better to handle danger from wherever it comes. Such is the face you must create for yourself, one face looking continuously to the future and the other to the past. For the future, the motto is, no days unalert. Nothing should catch you by surprise because you are constantly imagining problems before they arise. Instead of spending your time dreaming of your plan's happy ending, you must work on calculating every possible permutation and pitfall that might emerge in it. The further you see, the more steps ahead you plan, the more powerful you become. The other face of Janus looks constantly to the past, though not to remember past hurts or bad grudges. That would only curb your power. Half of the game is learning how to forget those events in the past that eat away at you and cloud your reason. The real purpose of the backward glancing eye is to educate yourself constantly. You look at the past to learn from those who came before you. Constant education. Constant education in your industry and learning from those people that came before you, it's important to have a mentor. It's important to have somebody else who you can carry out a conversation with that's gonna understand where you are coming from. Guys, you, you don't know how many times I have thought about switching up a product or created a new product and I'm sitting there talking about curing time and you know, fragrance oil ratios and cold throw. And I realize I am not sitting 
in the group. I'm not sitting with other creatives that have any inkling as to what I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's something important about hearing the words come out of your mouth that allow you to process a lot different. I really do. I really do. The many historical examples in this book will greatly help that process. Then, having looked to the past, you look closer at hand to your own actions and those of your friends. This is the most vital school you can learn from because it comes from personal experience. You begin by examining the mistakes you have made in the past, the ones that have most grievously held you back. You analyze them in terms of the 48 laws of power and you extract from them a lesson and for a lot of you guys, one of the first lessons you're probably going to have, if you have not had it already, um, is family and business normally don't mix. They can. There are a lot of businesses that are family oriented, and I'm always grateful. But um, yeah, yeah. H hiring that cousin that you knew you shouldn't have hired to come and help you or, you know, having their niece go advertise for you and change your pricing. You, you know. I shall never repeat such a mistake. I shall never fall into such a trap again. If you can evaluate and observe yourself in this way, you can learn to break the patterns of the past, an immensely valuable skill. Power requires the ability to play with appearances. To this end, you must learn to wear many masks and keep a bag full of deceptive tricks. Deception and masquerade should not be seen as ugly or immoral. All human interaction requires deception on many levels. And in some ways, what separates humans from animals is our ability to lie and deceive. In Greek myths, in India's Mahabharata cycle, in the Middle Eastern epic of Gilgamesh, it is the privilege of the gods to use deceptive arts. A great man. Odysseus, for instance, was judged by his ability to rival the craftiness of the gods, stealing some of their divine power by matching them in wits and deception. Deception is a developed art of civilization and the most potent weapon in the game of power. You cannot succeed at deception unless you take a somewhat distanced approach to yourself, unless you can be many different people wearing the mask that the day and the moment require. With such a flexible approach to all appearances, including your own, you lose a lot of the inward heaviness that holds people down. Make your face as malleable as the actors. Work to conceal your intentions from the others. Practice luring people into traps. Playing with appearances and mastering arts of deception are among the aesthetic pleasures of life. They are also key components in the acquisition of power. If deception is the most potent weapon in your arsenal, then patience in all things is your crucial shield. Patience will protect you from making moronic blunders. Like mastering your emotions, Patience is a skill. It does not come naturally, but nothing about power is natural. Power is more godlike than anything in the natural world. And the resolve that you get and the confidence that many of us gain when things start rolling in the right direction, I think is what this kind of relates to. Um, and there are a few ways I'm, I'm definitely waiting to get into this first law. Um, right at the 24 minute mark. What we're gonna do this prelude as a separate video because we're almost there, y'all. But as you're listening to him and just going through and thinking about things like anger, love, deception, patience, and you're trying to think and remain resourceful and a pure, good-hearted, well-rounded, you know, small business, but you're trying to know that you are creative and you are able to command the price that's necessary 
to not only, you know, keep you afloat, but to make you a profit, to make it worth your while. And you're, you're a, a consumer everywhere else. So why can't people have that attitude to, toward you, you know? Why is it those that are often closest to us are the ones that, you know, seem to give you the hardest time? At what point can the truthfulness and that resentment or, you know, just that I want to one up for once, you know, kind of come through? So those are all the things that these laws, I think, are really, really going to touch. Patience is the supreme virtue of the gods who have nothing but time. Everything good will happen. The grass will grow again if you give it time and see several steps into the future. Impatience, on the other hand, only makes you look weak. It is a principal impediment to power. Power is essentially immoral. And one of the most important skills to acquire is the ability to see circumstances rather than good or evil. Power is a game. This cannot be repeated too often. And in games, you do not judge your opponents by their intentions, but by the effect of their actions. You do not judge a person by their intentions, but by the effects of their action what is the end result what was the end product what were the end numbers it's not that i want to strike this deal or let's drop this contract and you know you're going to make so much money and in the end you're not seeing the numbers but that product is still being requested or i want to continue with the pricing you know, setup that we have in place, but I want to reduce the number of candles or products that I'm actually getting. Where, where's that cutoff? Who determines whether this wholesale or private label deal is best for my business at this point? Who decides that this should be a custom product or this should be something we are going to mass produce? It's, it's all of those kind of questions and you figure out that all the heads are going to be turning your way because it's your business. You measure their strategy and their power by what you can see and feel. How often are someone's intentions made an issue only to cloud and deceive? What does it matter if another player, your friend or rival, intended good things and had only your interests at heart if the effects of his action lead to so much ruin and confusion, it is unnatural for people to cover up their actions with all kinds of justifications, always assuming that they have acted out of goodness. You must learn to inwardly laugh each time you hear this and never get caught up in gauging someone's intentions and actions through a set of moral judgments that are really an excuse for the accumulation of power. It is a game. Your opponent sits opposite you. Both of you behave as gentlemen or ladies, observing the rules of the game and taking nothing personally. You play with a strategy and you observe your opponent's moves with as much calmness as you can muster. In the end, you will appreciate the politeness of those who are playing with more than their good and sweet intentions. Train your eye to follow the results of their moves, the outward circumstances, and do not be distracted by anything else. Your mastery of power comes from what you do not do, what you do not allow yourself to get dragged into. For this skill, you must learn to judge all things by what they cost you. As Nietzsche wrote, the value of a thing sometimes lies not in what one attains with it, but in what one pays for it, what it costs us. Time. This whole section, this last couple of minutes has been focusing on the importance of time of knowing how much you want to put in, when you want to put it in. This is the epitome of charging for your time and explaining to others 
so that they can respect time, especially time that's been set aside for you to work and to be productive. It's about time. Perhaps you will attain your goal and a worthy goal at that, but at what price? Apply the standard to everything, including whether to collaborate with other people to come to their aid. Mm. Every collaboration is not for you. Every time somebody wants you to create this product and we're going to create the label together and we're going to advertise at the same time and you need to analyze every single deal that is put in front of you. And the closer the relationship is to you, the more you need to analyze it because the stakes of the what ifs and when this does go bad, the, the, the possibilities of what can go wrong are much higher with someone who's closer to you. Pay attention to y'all. This, this, this concept comes up a lot. It's about time. so much energy to draw on and in this sense time is as important a consideration as any other <laughs> i told you time time y'all time the thing you are not paying yourself for if you are pouring an eight ounce candle and selling it for eight dollars no time it took time and effort and thought and passion to make that product it, it you don't get it back once it's done, it's done. Time. Never waste valuable time or mental peace of mind on the affairs of others. That is too high a price. Power is a social game. To learn and master it, you must develop the ability to study and understand people. As the great 17th century thinker and courtier, Balthazar Gracian, wrote, Many people spend time studying the properties of animals or herbs. How much more important it would be to study those of people with whom we must live or die. To be a master player, you must also be a master psychologist. You must recognize motivations and see through the cloud of dust with which people surround their actions. An understanding of people's hidden motives is the single greatest piece of knowledge you can have in acquiring power. Everyone doesn't have your best interest at heart. Everyone doesn't want to see you succeed. Everyone does not want to know that when they enter the store, that product that's on the shelf belongs to you. Everyone doesn't want you to start working three jobs and only go down to working one. Not everyone has your best interest at heart. And that's easier said until it hits you real close in that tight circle that you thought was knit so perfectly. It opens up endless possibilities of deception, seduction, and manipulation. People are of infinite complexity. And you can spend a lifetime watching them without ever fully understanding them. So it is all the more important then to begin your education now. In doing so, you must also keep one principle in mind. Never discriminate as to whom you study and whom you trust. Never trust anyone completely and study everyone, including friends and loved ones. Finally, you must learn always to take the indirect route to power. Disguise your cunning like a billiard ball that caroms several times before it hits its target. Your moves must be planned and developed in the least obvious way. By training yourself to be indirect, you can thrive in the modern court, appearing the paragon of decency while being the consummate manipulator. Consider the 48 Laws of Power, a kind of handbook on the arts of indirection. The laws are based on the writings of men and women who have studied and mastered the game of power. 
These writings span a period of more than 3,000 years and were created in civilizations as disparate as ancient China and Renaissance Italy. Yet they share common threads and themes, together hinting at an essence of power that has yet to be fully articulated. The 48 Laws of Power are the distillation of this accumulated wisdom gathered from the writings of the most illustrious strategists, statesmen, courtiers, seducers, and con artists in history. The laws have a simple premise. Certain actions almost always increase one's power, the observance of the law, while others decrease it and even ruin us, the transgression of the law. These transgressions and observances are illustrated by historical examples. The laws are timeless and definitive. The 48 laws of power can be used in several ways. By listening to this program straight through, you can learn about power in general. Although several of the laws may seem not to pertain directly to your life, in time, you will probably find that all of them have some application and that, in fact, they are interrelated. By getting an overview of the entire subject, you will best be able to evaluate your own past actions and gain a greater degree of control over your immediate affairs. The program can also be picked apart for entertainment, for an enjoyable ride to the foibles and great deeds of our predecessors in power. A warning, however, to those who use the program for this purpose, it might be better to turn back. Power is endlessly seductive and deceptive in its own way. It is a labyrinth. Your mind becomes consumed with solving its infinite problems, and you soon realize how pleasantly lost you have become. In other words, it becomes most amusing by taking it seriously. Do not be frivolous with such a critical matter. The gods of power frown on the frivolous. They give ultimate satisfaction only to those who study and reflect and punish those who skim the surfaces looking for time. All right, guys, that is the prelude to um, 48 Laws of Power. So first 24 minutes, 23 seconds, um, there were a couple of topics that were Ooh, kind of kind of hit hard. So it kind of makes you wonder um, the breakdown that's coming for the laws. And this is kind of what you can expect. We're going to do one episode for each law. And it'll be similar to what we just did. So we'll play the law all the way through. And then we will, as we're going through, we'll have those moments where we just stop in the moment and kind of just catch um the essence of what's being said and what's being shared. And then what we can also do is follow up with a live chat about, you know, that particular law of the week as well. And this will almost take us through an entire year, which is amazing. You know, 52 weeks in a year. And I'm thinking, you know, maybe we do a episode 49, 50, 51, you know, those last four. Then every let's see, we broke this down, every 12 episodes, there's a recap. Um, so every 12 laws, there's a recap um, kind of episode. And that would give us a year of walking through the 48 laws. And so it's one of those commitments, I think at this point would be nice. It's a podcast I think could definitely grow and we could probably see some changes in ourselves, but this allows us to look at ourselves as business owners. Um, I'll, I'll forever believe that. But I'm, I'm also thinking that these laws will make us think about how we design our deals, what we're willing to accept from other people, how we allow others to interpret our level of business. Um, you know, when do we stand up for ourselves and making sure that our message and our motives are clear? So it's it's really personal. This this one is really personal. It really hits. 
and um, I'm excited. I'm excited. So I will see you guys. The goal is for me to um, have a chance to record weekly and to upload. So I'm going to look at Tuesdays, every Tuesday, have a new episode, you know, nicely uploaded, but uh, it just kind of depends. We're going through this one and I may get extra motivated and just go for it depending on the law because I'm pretty sure some of these I probably have a story already built in for it but once again I'm Chandria I look forward to seeing you guys definitely join us on Facebook BCJ Decor D-E-C-O-R guys find us on TikTok um, same name Instagram same name but um, a lot of my content I know moving forward is going to only be on our page just to kind of shrink it down and know who we're talking to. And whenever you need help, we can kind of build that relationship. And I am one for mentoring and knowing about the ability to help others is always a goal of mine. So I look forward to seeing you guys. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for just stopping for a second to kind of share. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my little screen at this point. Um, and get everything cleaned up and we will upload and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one.